Hello, my sweet and precious students. Welcome back. Uh, again, I'll be gone. So you'll be watching these videos and then you'll uh, go to class. You'll have a sub. Uh, you'll work on your homework there. But in the meantime, what you can do is watch these videos and you must take notes. So you'll, you'll see that I'm going to be writing things down. Uh, if you need to watch the video once and then come back and write them down, that's fine too. I'm trying to keep the videos as short as possible, but with enough examples to get through it. So today we're going to be talking about lesson 58. At, uh, this is page 186, if you're following along at home. Uh, we are doing the distance problem today. Here's what you need to know about distance. Distance distance, I can't spell, it's not spelling class, this is math class, equals rate times time. Just kidding, you always have to spell. Distance equals rate times time. We abbreviate that by saying distance equals rate times time. Now what's neat about this, or we can write it as distance equals r times t, right? We don't even need to put the dot in because we know, hey, when we have two variables smashed together that we're going to be uh, multiplying those. So uh, what I really like about this though is that we can manipulate this to find rate, to find time, to do any of those. So if I asked you to solve uh, this equation here for time, solve, oh, <laughs> actually, you know what, I'm going to make this a little bit more organized. Solve distance equals rate times time for t. So if I asked you to solve this for t, you would say distance equals rate times time. Now I'm multiplying rate times time and I want to get that t by itself. The opposite of multiply is to divide. If I divide this by r, bam, bam, t is all by itself. But what I do to one side, I must do to the other. So I'm going to take this t and I'm going to move it to the front. t equals distance divided by rate. So there's another version of that equation. So we've solved for distance and we've solved for time. Now, for, actually I wanna write that specifically in here, for time. Uh, solve for, uh, well we solve for distance and time, so we gotta solve for rate. Solve for rate. Distance equals rate times time. The opposite of multiply is to divide. So I want to get that rate by itself. I'm going to divide by time. So I do that, bam, bam. Those two go away and I get rate all by itself. But what I do to one, got to do to the other. So what I end up with, I'm going to move this guy to the front. R equals distance divided by T. So I think this is really neat. We can multiply these things around and kind of manipulate those. You'll find you'll use this in science a lot. Math, science is really just, math is the the backbone for science. So um, keep that in mind. It's kind of neat. Okay, the example number one. This one says, Helen could travel 40 miles per hour. How long would it take her to go 600 miles? So 40 miles per hour to 600 miles. Now, notice the question says, how long? How long? Is that going to be distance, rate, or time? Well, long would be length of time, right? So how long does it take? So we're going to solve for time, right? So the way that we would solve that is we would say t equals, because we don't know that, the distance, which is 600 miles, divided by the rate, which is 40, and now 45, let's actually back up. 40 miles per hour is the same as 40 miles per one hour. Do you see that? So I'm going to put that in here. 40 miles per one hour. Now, why might I be doing it this way? Well, take a look at this 600. I can turn that into a fraction by putting it over one. So 600 miles. So T equals 600 miles uh, over one just making it into a fraction, divided by 400, oops, that should have been miles, four, or I'm sorry, 40 miles over one hour. Got a complex fraction here, right? A wonky looking fraction. Well, we don't divide fractions. What we do is we multiply by the reciprocal. So T equals 600 miles over one times one hour over 40 miles. Now, you guys have been doing uh, unit conversions, right? And so what's neat about this is we know, hey, we can cancel out that and we can cancel out that. And now we have hours, which is exactly what we wanted. We wanted time. So what we have is 600, 
So time equals 600 divided by up top, 600 times one is 600, one times 40 is 40. Lob off those zeros, right? Uh, oh, and the remaining unit is hours. So what I have is 60 over four, but if I cut that in half, I get 30 over two. I can cut that in half again and I get 15 over one. So T equals 15 out, 15 over one, which is just 15 hours. Hours, okay? Um, the reason why I want you writing these notes down is because now you can use these to do your examples when it comes to the problems in the book. Um, example number two says, uh, Harry could travel 350 miles in seven hours. Actually, you know what, another way to say that? Um, actually, you know what, we're gonna go back and I wanna talk about this. There is actually another way to do this. This is kind of a lengthy way of doing it, okay? Um, it, 40 miles per hour, Helen could travel 40 miles per hour and we wanted to know how she would go for 600. That would be 40 miles per hour, which we already talked about is 40 miles per one hour equals 600 miles per how many hours? We didn't know, X hours. Now we can cross multiply. 40 times X equals 600 times one, which gives me 600. Uh, the opposite, this so is 40 times X, right? The opposite multiplies divide. So we're gonna divide that by 40, divide that by 40, and then lob this off and we get, just like we did here, we kept reducing, right? X equals 15 hours. So there's two different ways of doing this. I really wanted to show you this way because you guys have been using those unit conversions, okay? But this is probably gonna be your easier, easier method. Now, going back to uh, example number two, Harry could travel 350 miles. And the reason why I went back and showed you that is because 350 miles in seven hours, okay? Uh, what A says, what was his speed? His speed is his rate, right? Miles per hour. Remember, we've got all these guys over here. Distance equals rate times time, time equals, and rate equals distance divided by time. So distance divided by time, see, do you see that? Okay, so another way of doing this would be, all right, well, we have 30 miles per seven hours, and we wanna know what his rate is, and his, it's his unit rate, meaning we, it needs to be per one hour. So we're gonna put this as one hour, okay? We'll make this X miles. So uh, now we have cross multiply, seven X equals 350 times one, which gives me 350. Divide both sides by seven, divide by seven. X equals, seven goes into 35 five times, so it's gonna go into 350 50 times. So X equals 50. So we go back and we look at it. What was his speed? His speed was, and if we put the 50 right back in here, 50 miles per, because per means division, one hour miles per hour. Okay, let's look at B. It says, uh, how long would it take him to travel 800 miles? So we have 350 miles over. Actually, what we can do, now that we have our unit rate, so we have, which equals 50 miles per one hour. I'm just re rewriting this thing right up here. It's 50 miles per one hour. So these two things are equal to each other. So I'm gonna take 50 miles per one hour. And it says uh, for B, how long would it take him to travel 800 miles? Let's, let's set up our proportion here. Miles is up top, so let's do 800 miles. How long, long is time. So X hours, because it's gonna be on the same one here. We cross multiply. So we get this times this gives me 50X equals one times 800 gives me 800. Divide by 50, divide by 50. This cancels out, this cancels out. I get X equals, let me lob off some zeros here. And then if we have 80 divided by five, which gives me 16. So 80 divided by five gives me 16. Well, let's take that X and put it back in. It was right here. And this was hours, right? Because hours to hours, miles to miles. So 16 hours, which means uh, for B, it says, how long would it take him to travel 800 miles? It would 
take him 16 hours to travel 800 miles. All right. All right, guys, the practice problems are on page 187. Uh, it's just a down, oh, I'm messing things up on my computer here. Make sure I didn't pause it. Okay, so here's your practice problems. Go ahead and pause the video, do those, come on back. So, uh, practice 4A. All right, so Mildred traveled her first 120 miles in three hours. 120 miles in or per three hours. A, what was her speed? Her speed was 120 miles per three hours. We wanna know what her speed was, which is per one hour, X. So we're gonna cross multiply, we get three X equals 120, divide this by three, divide this by three, X equals 40, but we have gotta go back and write our sentence here. We say uh, her speed, A, her speed, because this is 40 miles, right? 40 miles here, 40 miles per one hour. Her speed was 40 miles per one hour, per one hour. Okay, so then for B, uh, how long would it take her to travel 400 miles? 100, oh, oh, wait, now that we have our unit rate or her speed right here, 40 miles per hour, we can go back up here, 40 miles per one hour. Okay, so for B, I'm just gonna use this reduced version of that. 40 miles per one hour equals, uh, how long would it take her to travel 400 miles at the same speed? It does work the problem in two ways, but I'm not that cruel. <laughs> uh, okay, looking at this, I could put an X here, X hours, and cross multiply everything. But straight off the bat, I know if I multiply 40 times 10, I get 400. So if I multiply one times 10, I get, so multiply this times 10, multiply this times 10, I end up with 10 hours. So X equals 10 hours B. Uh, how long would it take her to travel 400 miles? It would take her 10 hours. All right, guys, excellent work. The, if you have any questions, let me know. I, will, I look forward to seeing you guys again, and I hope you are having a good day. Thank you.